so I'm going to use notes this time to try to cover everything that I want to cover. So what is all this about, really? I'm exposing my life to the whole, potentially the whole world. There's a good reason for that. I'm 52, discussing something that happened more than 20 years ago. The people involved in this matter that resorted to criminal practices or went along with what they knew was an adulteration of the facts are so shallow and void of any real understanding of humanity that they think such a matter as this, yes, even this, would have been something forgotten and left behind. That's unbelievable. Some say, some are saying, didn't we already beat you up and leave you for dead? Don't you understand that you lost? And we, we won. Yeah. Now go, just go back to being dead, accept it, and let it be. Yeah, shoo, shoo. This is one of the biggest problems we have in our society. Rooted in narcissism. People commit crimes and indecencies against others, and they have come to expect it that they should be able to do so without any real consequences. Making some kind of erroneous justification for such, they will cause an untold amount of injury to another person. Just thinking that such is okay, well, everybody does it, ah, that person must have been deserving of what he got. Yeah. That person wasn't really worthy or legitimate as a human being. Hmm. They're more human than the person, so they excuse themselves for doing that. That person shouldn't have even expected anything better or different. Some really truly believe in this narcissism, that they are the better person, even more human than the next. They can't see themselves really in the shoes even some of these people believe that they are Christian. Might just think and say, forgive and forget about it. They are to give the matter that it deserves. Now, get something else that comes script. And that's found at Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, especially. About the blood of certain people being used by the Romans as a sacrifice. And Christ says, Do you Galileans were worse than other people? And he said, no. it's about the Tower of Siloam that fell upon the people. He says, do you think they suffered this because that they did wrong? No. The Christ said, he's speaking to that unless they repent, that they are in trouble. Now just think about it. It's been more than 20 years now since this crime. If what I'm saying is true, it surely was a crime. A, very, a crime in which absolutely no one has been held accountable except for me and my children have been accountable, held accountable for what other people think that they should have done and now they know they shouldn't have done it yet they want to maintain this secret. They want to hold this lie and they want to keep this lie under the blanket While I continue to suffer consequences and my children can continue to suffer consequences because when you continue to feed children lies, you are hurting them. How is it that judges and certain the same things of which they attain convictions against others for? Doing these which are illegal, committing crimes that are of greater magnitude against society, yet unpunished for the mere fact that they are regarded above the law. It talks about that in the Pharisees judging others when they themselves are doing the same or worse. Our judges in this system that handle these cases are not qualified to handle these kind of cases. Degrees and moral decrepity. We need judges that have morality and a sense of family is about.
One thing that history should have taught us, and that is accountability, accountability shall come to such a society that tolerates saying we are tolerating in this country. One way or another, it comes. These in, this, in the, this country that have put themselves in high positions to make the decisions for the rest of the people, they make a great decision on what kind of accountability, accountability will manifest itself. Now, that's not my part to start rebellion. That's not my position, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. I am just stating the fact that, and we have already seen it, a small, small bit in a something called Occupy Wall Street. I'm sure, that's only the beginning of what we are going to see in the nearby future. You know, we make so many judgments against other countries being oblivious and all of so many things that go on in this country. If I was really guilty of what the court says that I am, I, any person, after 20 years, would have come to terms with such, don't you think so? Nothing in my life that really says that I'm an unreasonable person. There's nothing in my life that looks anything like what the court has accused me of besides the accusation of one woman. Now, if I did this to my children, it would be so much simpler just to acknowledge it easier, wouldn't it? It would. I mean, because people do find such a thing appealing. To see a perfect acknowledgement of what they did ask for forgiveness and so forth. It so has such an event. And if a person really does commit such a crime that they're accused of proper, that they come to terms with it. Now the fact is that I haven't. And thousands of parents, just as I myself have seen the way the court system works, I know that surely these stories are being told by hundreds or maybe even thousands of other parents must have some degree of Georgia, late Senator Georgia, late Georgia Senator Nancy Schaefer gives a scathing report against DCF, Children's Protection and Oddly, if I was this bad guy, I would have been better off. I would be able to say, I'm so sorry of what I did. Please forgive me. But I didn't do that. So I'm here like wanting to find truth and just wanting to people that will speak the truth. It flies in the face of all reason to keep proclaiming one's innocent if they are not innocent. Because other people, and they keep being labeled and labeled. And they're marked. This is a you know, phenomenon that works against a person and it's such a large, I think it's called double jeopardy of something of that nature. You can actually find information about this psychological war and torture, mind games, that other people that are in the position to others, how to drive a man crazy or impotent with very little effort. It takes a very strong mind and I think the help of Yahweh Yahovah, to keep insanity in such instances as this when it goes on for so long. People don't want to bring out the truth. They don't want to confront the truth. They'd rather take the easier course in life. Involved in lies are so good at keeping them under a blanket. Do the math and math and see some reality, usually. Do some of your own research on this. It's out there. Now, the evidence against DCF is overwhelming. There must be a thousand people that have stories. At least, there are at least hundreds of people. Now, I want to go back over some things about my past that I didn't quite going back over everything in this uh, summization. 
what kind of things I face and so forth. Okay, let's, first of all, let's go back. What kind of person loses their children, has them taken away from them, and that finds themselves in the position that I think that is my ex-wife. And for some unknown reason, the people who adopted my children, these people, speak badly against me and DCF. Okay? Now even my sister, a Jehovah's Witness, witness has worked in the DCF department. And I've listened to my sister speak and she learns how to shade, the, to put some gray tent in white that is no longer white. And she believes the story by DCF. She's in a note, written a letter about it to people in the state of Florida. Okay. But who am I, really? I had two or three fights with my brother Mike, one year older than me, between me and the other of the girl that I took out to the drive-in theater. Understandably, he didn't like the idea of me, this, her, his sister to go along with me to the theater, sneaking in. He initiated that fight when we got off the school bus. We rode the same school bus. Okay. It wasn't much of a fight. Um, and just kind of gave up. Okay, or somebody broke it up. I don't know what. I can remember over the couch, the couch in the, in the at home, my, one of my brothers was just laying down. It really felt like he was being a lazy slob. And I was just getting kind of tired of always kind of picking up things around the house and so forth. Came up to that couch and I just turned it over with my brother on it. <laughs> okay, two fights in high school which neither one did I initiate, okay? Between the high school and a restaurant that I ate at. And this one guy comes up to me. And about to hit me, okay? He literally looks like he's, you know, it's kind of a racial tension, blacks and whites, you know? And I'm taking a shortcut through the woods. And there's a few blacks there. And one of them comes up to me. And I think he's starting to hit me, so I give him a k okay? And he says, stop. And I stop, and it hits me. End of fight. I figured I was outnumbered, and I didn't get any further. Another guy kept pestering me day after day after day. One day he took a swing at me, and he didn't hit. So he thought he would try it again. So another day or two later, he's still bugging me. So that, you know, I said, okay, all right, enough is enough. So we got into it, and got into it. All right. Once again, marriage with Carol, with Rose, my second wife, and her boy. Her boy lived with us as a family every day. There was no problem. We went fishing. We went to the church ministry. We played. No, this was with Carolyn. Excuse me. Okay, Carolyn in Texas. Okay, we went fishing. We went to the church all the time. Went out in the ministry, little tennis occasion, and I even took her out on the golf course once. Yes, I did. She wasn't all warming up to me playing the piano. She just didn't get it, didn't, didn't like it, didn't like me playing the piano. I wasn't that good to learn, didn't have the piano that long, but uh, anyway. When we were down in McCann, Texas, commended as a couple. Um, we um, got a group gathering together, uh, so forth. Okay. Um, you know, this marriage started off much on a platform of okay. communication between her and a boyfriend, hidden from me a couple of months after our marriage. Okay. For years, I had looked forward to marrying somebody that was a vegetarian. For years, I'm looking for something that's appealing and attractive, compatible that's a vegetarian. And Carolyn says, oh, yes, that's me. Until after the day, get married. That dream ended the very first day. She said, no, I got no interest in being vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> okay. During our marriage, the first part of it, very, very bizarre behavior by her. And set in two occasions, I reacted not the best way possible that I thought was right. I thought was the only way I knew how, and not in a hurtful way but I thought was in a loving way. I think one of the things I did, she still, she held against me for a very long time. 
the first week for Christy, this was a few weeks after we were married, I think there was a large neon sign in regards to that. Um, Carolyn went to the movies with my best friend and his wife. I started to play the piano or work on my electronics home study course, one or the other. I didn't feel like going to school. But Carolyn went to the movies anyway. Okay. Years ago during a marriage, I wondered whether or not I made a big mistake taking Carolyn out to the piano out away from Fort Wayne and bringing her down to Texas. But I had been living in Texas for a few years. I had work established in Texas and I was making good money at the time that we were engaged and we got married. Carolyn came down to Corpus Christi. She made good friends. But she was very made close and uh, closer than myself uh, and better friends than myself with a couple that I had made with her before our marriage. She became better friends with these people than I was and closer. She had a good with the Riegers down in McAllen, Texas. Now, was I wrong or to take Carolyn out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, it's really not this really caused, is what caused such disruption in our life and her life and her adjustment. She just didn't adjust to it. But years later, after the divorce, after the children were taken away, I get a phone call. While I'm living, I get a phone call from somebody in the Victoria, Texas area. And she says, would you like to get back together again? I understand if we get back together again, we can get the children out of it, away from um, the free they've been adopted. And I, and I, I got so much emotions going. I go, my God, I just can't believe it. I say, call me back. I got a chance to catch my breath. Call me back in a few minutes, five or ten minutes. Not that I was interested and glad that she called. I was just shocked about she was asking to get back together. Now, I make a phone call to Victoria, Texas, and I talk to one of the elders there, and I say, is Carolyn in the area? Yes, yeah, she's here. Yeah, she's down here. She's married and has a child or so. Um, they're down here somewhere in the area. Now, because I'm still being accused, I'm still being accused by the people that adopted my children. No way. Huh. They take my children and they never spend any time researching what kind of person I was or I am. Okay. I want to speak a little bit about what is Jim's mother and other thing. Now, you never want to speak about the child's mother, your enemies with the children. Which I don't wish to do. I do have to say this and I have to speak this. See, everybody's mother, everybody's father is her person. So, if that's true, who's committing all this crime and chaos in this world? If everybody's, everybody's mom and dad is perfect and doesn't lie and is good, then who's doing all the bad? If everybody's child is good, Who's going to be the bad people in this world? We must come to terms with truth. What is really true? Seven years ago, I helped my children because I wanted them to know who their mother was. I wanted them to have the best kind of relationship with their mother as was possible. As much as possible. I told Anna, he says, yes, She's up here, she's married, she has three children. Six weeks later, five, six weeks, seven weeks later, I'm talking to Crystal, and she says, What, Dad? Mommy's mom's down here living with us now with her three children, and I'm visiting. No, she's living down here with us. I'm like, she's married. She has a place up in Indiana. No, she's divorced. And she's living down here with us. I, so I called the elder up in Indiana. And I say, my children said, Carolyn's living with them. She's divorced. And has, and their children are down there. And he says, 
I understand uh, that her husband is trying to sell the property up in Indiana and move down there too. All right. So I call my children back up again, and I, you know, I'm talking to them. And so that kid's married. Oh my! Oh my! Oh. That's a your mom lying to you. Don't you dare call mom a liar! Don't you dare call mom a liar! Yeah. Well, she has a serious lie. It's just a matter of fact. I the elders about this, and they said, William, she's always had that problem. She's always had a difficult time telling the truth. Now, I wouldn't have spoken anything about my ex-wife, Carolyn, if it wasn't for the fact that these actions held against me. I've actually felt sympathy for Carolyn because there must have been thing in her childhood when she was very young, one and two. She was adopted. That just keeps reality. Of course, a lot of people have that problem of dealing with reality. They say a lie, they tell a lie, and they keep they keep a blanket over it, but they're lying. You know, things like that cause Ill illnesses, and it causes a person to be, it hurts a person, and it hurts others around you. It's really time to come to grips with it. Carolyn's acting in destructive ways, I'm sure. She's, she must, and I believe that my one daughter, Crystal, has been extra hard to kind of take care of Carolyn. That's what I believe, that she's had special to help Carolyn out. And I commend Crystal for doing that, for her, for that. For caring, being a caring person. And I'm sure that she has done much to help Carolyn out but she doesn't understand that Carolyn continues to carry this lie with her. How many other lies? I don't know. 30 years of my life affect so much emotional turmoil. 30 years of my life because of what Carolyn helped create. When she said in court, oh, their father beat them, beat them, were so much worse than what those photographs show. They use that as evidence again. Photographs of a beating given to them by Ernest Stallnaker, from the best that I know. A beating received in Fort, I mean Lafayette, Indiana, while I was in Orlando, Florida. Who actually beat them? I don't know. Who put those bruises on them? I don't know. I know that Carolyn was more abusive to my children and our relationship than I had ever because of neglect and whatever else, I don't know. But I care for you, Crystal, and I care for you, Gina. And I hope you really seek out the truth. I don't, someone accused me of being manipulative, but there's nothing in my life that shows me to be a manip manipulative person, nothing. It's been seven years now since I've seen Crystal. I haven't seen Gina, and you, for what, 20 years, almost? Because other people have trained you to believe that I'm a bad guy. And you believe that, it's natural. That's the way it is with, with people. We are all brainwashed, almost all of us, in one way or another. We're trained to believe certain things. Few people are able to break out of that mold in which they've been, been trained to be in. Few people, but some do break out of that mold, make that extra effort. Now, when Rose and I were... We moved up, left everything in Orlando, Florida. I left my home, my business, our life as a family, failing, going out and playing tennis, a good relationship with Rose. We left as we were, as our attorney said, look, you either move up here or your visitations are going to be distant and you're going to lose the children. 
So we moved up there. Now, I don't know, maybe a month later or so, we're be the prospect of having a visit, a weekend visitation with my with Crystal and Gina. For a weekend. Samuel Chavez to take your children to say what? You want me to promise not to take my church? They're my children. Now who would make us like that? Who? Now there was a television interview of us in Lafayette, Indiana, and they allow that to air until they were able to edit out. Now the free are are part were archaeologists. Didn't want my children to get back. It was very. Remember the director of the book about the United Church Churches of Christ's country. They're all how to take of situations. More of that out there. Thinking as I. I understand my children have been beaten black and blue. I don't, I can tell you, I don't believe that I have to use, I have to spank my children in growing up. I can completely dismiss that. But I won't say that since I can say, honestly say, that they will not be spanked because I understand what happened. I don't need to use that form of Dr. Wyland, the DC wanted to talk to me one more time, and I felt like it was a mandatory meeting. So I go to Wyland again. She's talking to me about spanking. She wants me to believe, absolutely it must for me to have time with my children, to believe that spanking is wrong. So she hands me a book, William who takes book. If you don't, uh-huh. It won't be good. You'll regret it. And I say, no, I don't want the... I'm not going to read it. Phyllis Freeze in court. She tells me that he was wrong. That people don't understand what the Bible really says because it does not really support the concept of actually spanking a child. Now I want to think about war. Joining the military, so Air Force, Marine, Army, etc. In every country, in every country there's somebody calling you to go and serve in the military. There's also something to a way of peace, to a godly life. And if I were to speak to you individually, it's a decision that you make, whether or not you go to war, whether or not you go into a path of a godly of life, and choose the course of peace, it makes no difference on what goes on in this world. Individually, the decision you make, to go to war, to join the military, or choose a way of peace. It'll make no difference in this full scheme of what's going on in this world. Would you accept you one million people, one out of a hundred thousand? For instance, Adolf Hitler. But the person that goes, that joins the military, is deliberate to learn the way of violence. How to kill, how to destroy protection. Not at all. Now, draining me of all my resources, all that I went through, is also violence. Putting me, taking all that I've had, and draining me and beating me down to nothing. Is there violence? Now, my children weren't taken away from me. And Ernest Stallnaker in Indiana. I was living in Seattle, and I had to hire a private investigator to find out what was going on. No one contacted me.
They weren't taken away from me. You know, I know that you've been trained to believe that I'm a bad and I'm not naturally a very warm and friendly person. I guess it has a lot to do with the way that I was raised. A fair person. And you should really know who your father really is. It's not, it's not good for you to keep going on like you're going. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. I haven't reacted or responded the way that you thought that I should. I wish that I had. I'm sorry about that. I come from a handicap in my son life. As I might have stated already, as a child, I can't remember when my mom actually hugged me. Not one time. Not once. Not one time. So I come from a handicap. Carolyn, your mother, is carrying on lies which are for her, and they will keep to make her life difficult as long as she holds on to these lies. I have to talk to Mrs. Freeze to ask her whether or not certain things were so. They said that they have no reason to lie to you. She has more reason than anybody to lie to you because she's emotionally caught up in this. Emotionally tied up in this. She has every single reason to have lied to you. 